What's up, math fans? We're gonna talk about sequences, and a sequence is basically a collection or a set of terms. Um, most likely, it'll keep it. We'll keep it pretty basic. The terms will be numbers. Uh, they could be integers. They could be decimals, fractions, rational numbers. They could be imaginary numbers. But it's a series. It's a it's an order of numbers or a set of numbers. All right. So here I have some numbers in a row. And I would like you to fill in the next term, the missing term. So if I look at this, first thing I want to do is try to establish a pattern so that I know what's next. Um, from 42 to 50 is 8. From 50 to 59 is 9. That's already not a constant pattern. Uh, 59 to 66 is 7. So there's no pattern. If there's no pattern, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another video where I explain the difference between arithmetic and geometric. Uh, those are two different kinds of patterns. So here there's no pattern at all. It was actually a trick question. The answer is 72. If you've ever taken the one train in Manhattan, these are the stops along the one train, 42nd and 50th, 59th, 76th, 72nd Street. All right, so that's just a bunch of numbers in a row. It's a sequence. Um, here is actually a pattern. So let's take a look. From two to seven is, huh, how do I get from two to seven? Uh, it should be obvious to you, but if it's not, a good idea is to take the second term and subtract the first term. I would do 7 minus 2, and I said, oh, I have to add 5 there. Uh, then I would do 12 minus 7. Oh, look at that. I have to add 5 again, and I have to add 5 again. So my pattern, my rate is I'm adding 5 every time, so the next one would be 22, etc., etc., etc. This number is very helpful to finding the next term. It is known, I use the word rate, it's actually known in the sequences chapter, it's known as the common difference. A difference means I'm either adding or subtracting to get to the next term. So D stands for common difference. So in this question, D would equal 5. Okay? Uh, you used to learn it in similar fashion. You would say m, the slope, m, the rate, equals 5. Same thing, d, the common difference, equals 5. All right? 5 plus 2 is 7, seven uh, 2 plus 5 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, etc., etc., etc. Now, some other vocabulary you should be comfortable with. n, when I refer to n, it means the number of terms. So it could go on to infinity, or it could be a finite sequence. If it's a finite sequence, let's say I didn't have dot, dot, dot. Let's say I stop right there. Well, what's my n? My n is 1, 2, 3, 4. I have 5 terms. n is 5. Here, this would be where n equals 4. This would be where n equals 3, etc. This is where n is 1, the, the, just one term, 2. Um, so n is the amount of terms you're looking at. D is the common difference, also known as the pattern or the rate. Um, a sub n is just fancy notation for the nth term. Could be the tenth term, the hundredth term, whatever term I want to get to. Uh, a sub 1 is always the first term. So, really what you're looking at here is a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5. Okay, first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. That's it. That's what the notation means. Now, you want to look at two different kinds of formulas. Very easy formula, and still I think is an easy formula. All right, Recursive means how do you get from one term to the next. So if you say it out loud, oh, you just add 5, I get that. How do you write that? I would say a sub n means the term I want to be at, the nth term, could be anywhere. Let's say this is a sub n for right now. The fourth term is equal to the term right before it, that's a minus 1, the term right before it, how do I get from here to here? I add, uh, in this particular question, I add 5. So I'm going to put 5. So that's it. That's my whole formula. a sub n, the term I want is equal to the term before it, plus 5. The term you want is equal to the term before it, plus d. This formula works only, only if there's a common difference. Notice there was no common difference, so there is no formula. If there's a common difference, it's going to be a formula, and it's going to be considered an arithmetic sequence. So this is for arith 
arithmetic sequences only, okay? Arithmetic, not arithmetic. Um, also, this is also only for arithmetic sequences. Is there an explicit, also known as a direct formula? Meaning, instead of going from here to here, that's easy to figure out how to go from the third to the fourth. What if I wanted to get right to the tenth term without going in order? Is there a direct, explicit formula? Well, it's easy to figure out the same way you used to figure out y equals mx plus b. So m is your rate, and we already know the rate, it's jumping by fives. And b, I used to call the y-intercept, so b is not as obvious here. b would actually be the zeroth term, and the zeroth term doesn't even exist. So there's another way to figure this out, uh, and here's the formula right here. All right, so let me write that for you. A sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. It looks funny, looks complicated. It's not. It makes perfect sense. This means the term you want is equal to the first term. Okay, I got the first term. That's always given. Plus 1 less than the number of terms. So let's say I want to get to the fifth term. How far away is the fifth term from the first term? It's four steps away. So that makes sense that it's n minus one steps away. If n was five, the fifth term, one less than that means it's four steps away. From here, one, two, three, four steps away. And each step jumps by five. So that's why you multiply by the common difference, the five. All right, so that's four times five. So that's two plus 20, which is 22. And that makes perfect sense. So this weird and crazy formula makes perfect sense. It just says wherever you want to be, get you get there by starting at the first term, jumping n minus 1 terms, multiplying by however many each term jumps by. It's really simple. And that's very, very similar to y equals mx plus b. Um, if you wanted to figure out the zeroth term, that imaginary term, that's easy too. You just count backwards. And um, let's see, if I were to count backwards, Right? I would be subtracting 5 each time, which means the zero term would be negative 3. Watch what happens. So what I just did was showed you how to get to the nth term. I'm sorry, the fifth term. I was very specific. But in general, here's the formula right here. Uh, all you're doing is replacing a sub 1 and d. You're not replacing n because it's a formula for whatever n is. So I would write a sub n is equal to a sub 1 is 2 plus n minus 1 times 5, because d was 5. That's it. That's the formula. Now, watch this. We're going to distribute. So that's 2 plus 5n minus 5. Now I'm going to combine like terms. That's uh, 5n minus 3. Minus 3. A sub n equals 5n minus 3. This would be your explicit formula. Here is your recursive. Here is your explicit. This makes perfect sense to me. I know my rate, I know my common difference is 5, and I know my zero term is negative 3. That's why I'm relating it to y equals mx plus b. So if you understand y equals mx plus b, you can do it this way right away, or the way we teach it in the sequence chapter is we use this formula, which eventually turns into that anyway. All right, let's look at this. Here they don't give you the sequence, they want you to build the sequence. So if a sub n is negative 3n plus 1, then a sub 1 is negative 3 times 1 plus 1. a sub 2 is negative 3 times 2 plus 1. a sub 3 is negative 3 times 3 plus 1. All you're doing is replacing that number, that subscript, with the variable itself. Um, so the first term, let's see, is negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, etc. So you're imagining that you have a sequence... That starts with the negative 2 and then negative 5, and then I'm already good. I already see the pattern. I know that it's going to keep going by, you don't believe me, do another one. a sub 3 is negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. So the next one's negative 8. Once you've got your pattern, you can keep going. The next one's going to be negative 11, negative 14, and it will keep going like that. All right? So how you would set up a sequence is either they give you the sequence and you get the formula, or they give you the formula and you get the sequence. And you should be able to now figure out any term in that sequence, okay? I know you're itching to find out what happens when you add all the terms in a sequence. That's another formula I'm gonna give you in a later video. So thanks for watching, see ya.